Hi guys, Nick here from Intuitive Tennis. Well, today I want to teach you how to hit the perfect forehand. So what is a perfect forehand? Well, it's a forehand where you're going to have feel, control, and power. In other words, uh, the ball is going to feel great coming off your strings, it's going to go right towards the intended target, and you're going to be able to hit it hard. So there are three sequences of movements that need to take place in order for you to have the perfect forehand. Let's find out what they are. So the first sequence of the forehand is watch and turn. And it's something like this. I'm in my ready position and I'm watching the opponent and as soon as I recognize, okay, this ball is coming to my forehand, I'm going to make a turn like this. I'm going to continue watching the ball when my body is going to make a turn and now it's going to allow me to set it up appropriately. And what I don't want to do is stay open like this and, and move this way. Or I also don't want to go into what uh, some people call the unit turn right away. Uh, it's way too early. I don't want to go like this and, and get my hand across the body because now my movements are going to be very mechanical and robotic when I move. So I don't go into that yet. That comes much later in the swing. I simply just, from a ready position, I turn towards my forehand side and now I'm ready to set up. So the second part of the forehand is the setup phase. And this is a very important phase if we want to hit a good forehand and we need to be set up perfectly. So we already know it's a forehand. We've turned this way and now we start setting it up. Uh, it can go basically in four different directions. We can go this way uh, on the run. Uh, we can go uh, forward to the ball like this. Uh, we can go backwards if we get pushed back like this in a turn position. Or even if we decide we want to hit a forehand from the backhand side, uh, do the same progressions. We go turn a little bit and now we can move this way to the forehand. So now step number three, uh, we're going to actually hit the ball. So we've already turned, we've set it up perfectly, and we're going to be in a position uh, something like this. Okay, and this is what looks like a unit turn. Now remember, this happened much later in the stroke. This is not the first thing we do. So this happens much later. And now we're ready to separate uh, the non-dominant arm uh, from the dominant arm. We're ready to go into our backswing. And when should this happen? Well, you should start separating and when the ball is bounced on your side of the court or maybe if that rushes you a little bit too much you can do it when the ball is about to bounce yeah, that feels like it gives you a little bit more time and you ask yourself well, what are, why should I do it this way why not take the racket back early well if you take the racket back too soon if you separate too soon then you develop a hitch in your backswing and you have to pause at the wrong time remember by waiting this long and this stroke is going to be continuous and fluid without any interruptions and also because our focus is solely on the ball it's going to be very intuitive we're not going to think about the backswing that much we're only going to be focused on the contact so now let's talk about the actual backswing so we've started to separate now we're going to go into our backswing here so if we just look at the maybe the four best players of the last 10 years and take a look at how they take the racket back they all do it differently uh, so Federer will take a racket like this and he'll drop it down here. Uh, you take an Nadal, he takes it back like this and then he drops it in here uh, like this. You take a Djokovic, he takes the racket back uh, all the way and with the strings are facing to the back fence like this. And you take Andy Murray uh, who takes it back up high and then has the wrist kind of hang down like this, something like this. So you can see that they, do, they all have great forehands. They all do it a little bit different. You take the top hundred uh, they all have a different backswing and the reason why is is that the backswing is intuitive everybody has a different backswing and because you're not focused on the backswing as a player and you do it completely intuitively we already talked about the focus being on the ball and what the racket does back here it, it's going to do on its own it's going to lag on its own if we do the correct movements uh, and the racket is going to go down on its own towards the ball depending on the height of the ball and so you do not have to worry about your backswing so we do not have to worry about the backswing. Uh, the backswing is completely intuitive and it's going to be the same every time. You start playing at uh, whatever age and you hit tens of thousands of forehands and uh, the backswing always looks the same. Well, how is that possible? But well, it's basically muscle memory. You're unconsciously doing it and it's always going to stay the same. And one thing I like teaching about the backswing is the starting point. So when we have a starting point that's higher and then the racket will will drop back here from a higher point. That is really the only thing I would like you to, to look at uh, is to, to start from the ready position like this 
and turning it and maintaining this high position of the racket. Of course, it works the other way too. You have somebody like a Pete Sampras who has one of the best forehands ever. Ivan Lendl, great forehand, who had kind of a, a lower separation point and they kind of led the way with their, with their elbow like this. Uh, but I feel like the modern forehand, most of the players these days, uh, they have a high starting point with the racket. Okay, so now we've covered the backswing and now something happens actually at the same time as the racket is going back and that is the rotation of the left side of your body uh, on the right hander. So basically we have to get our, our left hand out of the way when we start hitting the ball. This happens very early. So we start getting the left hand out of the way and we start the rotation like this. We start going forward and the ultimate goal being making contact in front where the right shoulder is in front of the left, left shoulder. And this is something that all good players have in common. Whether it's a good junior, uh, whether it's a good college player, or all the pros, they all hit the ball in front on the majority of their shots. Maybe sometimes uh, they're in a defensive position and they hit the ball a little bit more behind, but um, let's say on 99% of their shots, uh, they are in front, and this is absolutely necessary uh, to have a top level forehand. So now we're in the contact point here, and what happens next is very important. So we don't want to hit forward on the ball, and we don't want to hit, in other words, hit through the ball. We want to hit across the ball like this. This is what all the pros do, uh, even WTA or ATP. Uh, they both hit across the body. And if you look at what we, the prior steps we took on the forehand, uh, we started separating here, and then we started rotating early, right? And now the rotation is going uh, this way, and now once I make contact in front like this, well now if I go forward, I break my rotation, and I actually disconnect the ball from my body. I lose the ball this way. Now you can sometimes see players that when they're too far away from the ball, and they hit forward like this and they lose all their power. So in order to keep our power and connect that ball to our core, we must hit across the body in an up, across, and back fashion like this, and we get a lot more strength on the ball that way. So why must we hit across on the forehand? Uh, well, the reason is uh, multiple. So there's, it's for feel, it's for control, and it's for power. And let me break it down one by one. So why is there more feel going across is because we're keeping the ball longer on our strings. So we're feeling the ball a little bit longer. We're not letting it come off the strings too fast. Uh, so there's definitely more feel in coming across. Uh, we know this on a slice backhand, for example, which is kind of a finesse shot that we, we hit across and we can feel the ball on the strings longer. And it's a very desired thing in tennis. Uh, another reason why we want to hit across is control. So the control in tennis comes from keeping uh, the strings positioned towards the target as long as possible. And so if we break this uh, position, uh, we lose control pretty fast. If we keep this position as long as possible, something like this, and then we have ultimate control of the ball. And now thirdly, we also get more power by hitting across. And let me explain. By going, we already started, you know, rotating here. We already started rotating, and now we're going to hit the ball in front, as we already covered. And now by hitting across, we are actually connecting the ball to our body. See, we are much stronger pulling the racket across this way than we would be if we went forward on the ball like this. This is true in a close stance forehand as well. If we connect the ball this way, we are much stronger on the ball than if we went forward on the ball this way because if we go forward, we disconnect the ball from our body. So in any case, whether it's close stance or open stance, we are always much stronger hitting across. And I want to make a separate video where we cover this issue um, with lots of slow-mo footage and so on. Uh, where we're going to talk about how we must hit across on all shots, topspin, and flat. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.